Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Now today guys, I'm very excited because I'm going to be cross-pollinating my two blooming beautiful Epiphyllum, commonly known as the orchid cacti, that are blooming beautiful in the polytunnel today. And I have my Epiphyllum Mrs. G beam that some of you may have seen from a video I did a couple of days ago of, of this beautiful blooming beauty here. And it has a gorgeous humongous stigma, tons and tons of pollen there, all inside it. And um, this is the old flower that is now deflated. And what is very exciting is at the same time, not only do I have this beautiful blooming Mrs. G. B. Epiphyllum, beautiful here, I have my Pegasus, um, Epiphyllum Pegasus, which has the most magnificent of fuchsia pink blooms not just with this one bloom but two more as well there is three humongous blooms and yesterday guys I made a video when this was blooming with the three blooms and also with my other epiphyllum Mrs G beam blooming lovely at the same time and I mentioned that I'm going to be doing a cross pollination video um, to see if I can get seed and if we get seed I'm going to be sowing the seed and um, we've got little epiphyllum babies. Now I've cross-pollinated epiphyllum quite a few times in the past and it's always been very 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 successful. Um, the, the, the flower starts to wilt away and then a little fruit forms on the end and the seed can take sometimes up to a year to be ready to harvest and if you want to see a video that I made before on how to cross-pollinate epiphyllum that was a great success do check out the video there where a couple of years ago now, probably two and a half years ago, where I cross-pollinated um, a couple of my other two epiphyllums. Actually, it was Mrs. G. Beam, the one also, with, it was Mrs. Che Che Castanengo. And we got fruit and we got seed and we sowed the seed and we've got little baby epiphyllums that we have growing in our other greenhouse out in the yard. So I'm very happy about that. But I have never cross-pollinated these two together. And the reason why I'm cross-pollinating and I'm not just pollinating this with its own its own varieties. One is I've already got this variety and also it's much more of a su higher success rate when you actually cross-pollinate two different types of epiphyllum than when you cross-pollinate them on their own. Now why that is I'm not sure but it's just one of those cases I cross-pollinated, sorry pollinated epiphyllum when they've just been on their own flowers it's not as been as successful as it is cross-pollinated plus it's more exciting to cross the two and before I go any further I want to give a very special thank you to my wonderful fiance Hansi who is behind the camera filming me at the moment he's doing an amazing job and if you're not familiar with Hans do go over and subscribe to his amazing YouTube channel Family of Cactus and Other Beauties where he shares videos on cacti and also um, gardening and indoor house plants too so do check him out guys links will be up above and Let's get going then guys, let's get cross-pollinating. Now I have made a few videos on how to cross-pollinate cactus flowers and the procedure is always the same. But if you're watching this for the first time, I'm gonna tell you what to do. Clean plate here. You don't have to have a plate, you can just use a brush or a cotton wool bird Q-tip and just go like that. But this does collect any pollen that falls off. And with epiphyllum flowers, as you can see there, they're absolutely loaded with pollen. So if you go like this, it's gonna go everywhere. Not that that matters, but if it falls into there, then you can sort of go like that again. Now, if I was um, cross-pollinating purely this one with just the other one, I would use two different brushes and two different plates because you don't want to get the pollen mixed onto both so you know what you're cross so you're actually pollinating but I'm actually going to cross both of them directly it really doesn't matter I'm putting pollen onto both of them so I only need the one brush in this case and it's important you use a clean brush um, not one you've been pollinating other flowers with so you know it's going to be true to this and um, I'm using a little tiny tiny little makeup eye brush that is clean but you can use a q-tip cotton wool bud or any type of little paint brush or any eye makeup lip brush even that is clean and um, what you want to do then is this is the pollen with little filaments on there that is the stigma and as I say you can use the pollen on there onto the stigma there and cross pollen on the same flowers on the same plant 
and that's nothing wrong with that if you want to produce more of the same plant but it's much easier to be honest to do it from cuttings unless you enjoy growing from seed like we do but cross-pollination is always more successful in personally in my experience and it's only my experience plus it's good to um, cross the two different types of hybrid type of epiphyllums that you've got so I want to get this pollen here onto the stigma of the other um, epiphyllum which we've got in flower Mrs G B. So what you want to do here is load up all the all the pollen. As I say, this plate should collect any that fall off. And you can see, see all that pollen on there, all the little white bits of pollen. It's loaded, and that's when you know you've got a lot. You don't have to go mad. You only need one tiny, tiny, tiny speck of this pollen is enough to pollinate the other flower. It's a bit like the sperm in the humans. You know, you only need a tiny, tiny microscopic bit. You don't have to load it up. And there you go. There's the pollen there from um, from Epiphyllum Pegasus. And this is Mrs. G Beam. You want to get that onto that stigma. So there you go. Paint it on like that. And that's all you want to do there. And what I'm going to do now is, as I say, if I just wanted to, to purely pollinate Epiphyllum Pegasus with Mrs. G Beam, that's all I would do. Um, but if I want, and, and I would actually use then a clean brush again to take pollen from this one to pollinate Pegasus. But because I'm actually cross-pollinating them both, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to be comp completely producing a completely new hybrid. So it doesn't matter in this case. So what I'm going to do there, just brush a little bit of the pollen off onto there. It really doesn't matter. And then load this one up here. But as I say, you change the brush if you wanted it completely pure but I'm just producing my own little hybrid. As I say, Hans is doing a fantastic job. It's a good job, but uh, he's tall, because <laughs> I could not do this myself with my hands being completely taken up with this. There you go, that's all the pollen there from Mrs. G Beam. And there's gonna be little bits of the Pegasus pollen still on as well, but as I say, because I'm cross-pollinating them both exactly, it does not matter. And uh, there you go, wanted to get that pollen onto there. Hans, you're doing an incredible job, my love. And that's really all there is to it. That's how easy it is. You don't have to keep going over it or anything like that. And as I say, it's it's purely luck if they get pollinated. There's no right or wrong. I've pollinated many cactus flowers, epiphyllum, and they haven't always pollinated, but most of the time they do. So stay tuned for future update. If they don't pollinate, it's no big deal. And some epiphyllums can be a little bit, sometimes, especially many hybrids, can be a bit... Um, infertile to the other pollen from other epiphyllums it's just a bit like with slumbergeria or the christmas cacti maybe it's similar like that but we'll see how it goes so stay tuned if it doesn't get pollinated no big deal and um just see how it goes and as i say these the reason why i picked these two flowers is because they've been open a couple of days to open a fresh day um, if they're freshly opened, best to leave it a few hours. Um, don't let the, the flower two or three days where it's starting to wilt, for example, like this one here, and then try and cross the pollen because it's already on its way out. It's not going to pollinate. Um, but you never know. <laughs> Sometimes they get they pollinate themselves, as you can see. That will start when it's pollinated. That will start to swell up and form a fruit, <coughs> and then many months later, it's ready to harvest. So guys, stay tuned for an update. The pollen can be okay in this, but not the stigma. I yeah, think. that's exactly right. Hans is right there. There's nothing wrong with the pollen in that, but the stigma will be... <laughs> 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 so the pollen is, if you have one open the next day and here, you can still use the pollen from the deflated one and then put it onto the fresh one. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to know a little bit more on how to care for Epiphyllum and the orchid rainforest type of cacti, including a lot of the, the rainforest cacti can many different categories. And stay tuned for a video I'm going to be making on the different types of rain forest cacti that you can get. There's many different types from Slumbergera, commonly known as the Christmas cactus, Ripsalidopsis, Easter cactus, and a lot of the Epiphyllums and the Hylocereus. And this is a video request from a wonderful friend, Anna, from Cactus Caffeine. And Anna, you've been asking about this video for so long, and I'm gonna get it made, I promise, about the different types of epi epiphytic cacti you get, because it's quite a broad range. So stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, thank you, Anna, for the video request. And if you're not familiar with Anna's channel, uh, Cactus Caffeine, go over and subscribe to Anna. She, she lives in the bars and she has the most incredible flowering cacti and beautiful collection. So links also up above to Anna's channel, guys. Take a copy, cup of coffee with her. <laughs> yeah, take a cup of coffee with her. Anna, please send some of that sunshine over to Ireland. It's pouring down your rain the past few days here, but it's not stopping, not stopping the blooms, thank goodness. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I want
want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of flower and cactus power as always from across the Emerald Isle and until the next video bye bye we're gonna have lots of seed and lots of babies